How you doing YouTube? It's that time of year. It's time for an update on my favorite, the avocado trees. They're all flowering. My graphs are taking. It's time to walk around and give you guys a tour. Please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and I'll keep bringing more content to you. With that being said, let's get started. Here we have a Fuerte avocado tree that I purchased about four years ago in the 15 gallon. I have cut it back twice. In the four years, I think I only had flowers once until this year. It's loaded with flowers, so we're probably finally gonna get some fruit off of this. And the bees are working it pretty good. Once again, we do high density planting so it's really close to a haas that was purchased maybe five six years ago if you watch some of my old updated videos you'll see that it almost died and i finally got it to recover and gotten avocados the last two years off of it this year i think i only got about four And I've also cut that one back maybe twice now. Also notice the, the old leaves falling and the new leaves coming in. Uh, notice a lot of people on my, uh, one of the Facebook group pages that I'm on, they're always posting about how their tree is dying or what fertilizers it needs. I think I also had a group member come by and he thought the tree was looking pretty ugly and I had to explain to him this is the natural process that the old leaves drop and provide mulch and the new leaves come in. So it's going through that process. Um, a lot of people tell you to add a lot of stuff to your trees but you need to kind of monitor it and make sure it's just not the normal leaf drop. See the bees working it. So don't just go adding a bunch of stuff or thinking it's salt burn. Some of it's the natural process. So if you've been feeding and watering the tree then you should know, uh, you'll know the difference. Another in-ground tree. This is a Jan Boyce. It's growing really fast. This was a little five gallon that was about down here when I got it a year ago. Um, it's dropped all its old leaves. <clears throat> See, I have it planted in ground. It's on a mound. And that uh, other video that I'm doing will show you that that's for aeration because this area of my yard gets saturated and doesn't drain as well as the rest. That's another green gold that I grafted. And this is the, my first successful graft. It's in the ground now, it's a kahalu. You notice I have this uh, kind of cheap fencing up just to keep my dogs out until I can build a fence. So this potted plant is a Pinkerton. Had it almost two years and it's been in the pot the entire time but it's flowering profusely one of my favorite trees is the reed last year was the first year that i didn't get any fruit off of the reed and i think it only had three or four flowers so this year it's looking loaded again it's been a really slow grower um so what I did is I added extra mulch this year. So we got about a six inch layer of mulch and it's doing really well. So let's see if we can't get this thing to start growing more upright. So been a pretty good producer until last year. And here we have a gem planted in a five gallon. I just planted that one in the fall and any tree that isn't blocked with the fencing 
I have to cover with chicken wire so my Rottweiler here, Spike, doesn't dig up the roots. So that, that gym's doing well and it's flowering. So this is the bacon avocado purchased about three years ago. And it's pretty much giving me fruit every year. Last year I got about eight, so it's been doubling every year. So I'm imagining this year I'll get 20 to 30. But it's a beautiful tree. The old leaves are dropping. And the bees are working it. So I went ahead and sprayed honey water on the flowers on most of my trees this morning. So the bees were working it before that. So I'm kind of skeptical about, you know, interfering with that. But I figured I'd try it anyway. I'm going to do a separate video on this approach graft here with the Brazilian seedling that you see here. It, that that seedling's five, over five feet tall and it's only a year old so I'll do a separate video but let me show you the graft union on this approach graft there you'll see so I'll go ahead at some point I'll cut this off and I may graft onto that and you see the bacon side here so this tree will be a multi variety so I'll cut it here and the tree will be a uh, bacon and I'm thinking of either chopping it here and grafting on or maybe just chop it and leave it all bacon haven't decided that's a separate video so that's the bacon 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 seem to grow fast and flower profusely and I think people are notorious for uh, harvesting the fruit too early so it has a bad reputation for flavor but if you wait until late January and February then I think you'll you'll be surprised at how much more buttery the fruit is so around here a lot of trees that I've grafted we have a Jan Boyce there. I'm doing an experiment with woody soil on that one so it's not planted in a sandy soil and it's doing fine so far. The rest of my trees are planted in uh, sandy soil. Uh, most of them are in Gary's top pot. That is the Don G. It's a pretty growing pretty slow compared to a couple that I've seen in top pot. Um, that's a Choquette flowering already here we have a charwill and this is a reed that I purchased uh, in the five gallon maybe a year and a half ago um, I'm doing a separate video on how this one looked like it had root rot even though it's in the top pot so um, I've had it elevated so uh, I went ahead and drilled extra holes for more aeration and I've been kind of cutting off the dead ends but that'll be a separate video see this would be a long video if I went around and showed you every single graph that I've done but this is an experiment that I'm doing with an approach graft so you see two seeds and there are two seedlings grafted into one, and that'll eventually be a multi-variety tree. Here is another example with an approach graft. Let's turn that sideways so you can see it. You see here that's two different seeds and two different seedlings grafted into one. If I can get a close-up. That's the graft union. Here's another bacon that I grafted maybe oh I want to say six months ago maybe I did that in the fall I think I should have wrote the date down but there's the graft union so that one's doing well another in-ground seedling dropping its old leaves once again and I grafted a Carmen on top so I'm waiting for that to push yeah.
If you notice the theme, I have a lot of trees in ground that are close because we like to keep the yard open so that my kids can do their, you know, gymnastics and things like that and the dogs have room to run. So you'll notice a theme that all of my trees are planted up against the fence and it, it works for us, the high density planting. This is turning out to be my favorite tree. It's probably about a four year old seedling. Um, if you look at the trunk on it, it's pretty thick for a tree that small. And it's because I cut it back so many times. So now all the grafts started taking. Um, the first year or so, the grafts were failing. And I, I guess after cutting it back so much, everything just started taking off. That's a Forte. This here is a Charwill. Waiting on the Chocat to push. We have a reed here flowering. Um, this Kahalu flowering profusely. Have another Kahalu in here flowering. It's a smaller one right there. Choquette, which is a Florida variety. And we have a bacon here. Have a hoss here. And one of our members named Ryan Seelig. Um, we have a scion from his grandfather's seedling and the fruit was really good and nice size. So that's this one here. And that one's called a Seelig Hall. Let's see what else we got. We got a reed here. That I got some scion wood from a member. It didn't look too good, but it actually pushed. Um, some of these scions were in my refrigerator for up to two months and they still took. So um, I'll talk about that in a separate video. I think I'm waiting on a Carmen to push and I'm waiting on a Nabal here to push. So that's probably my favorite or tie for my favorite tree with my Haas and read so let's go to the hoss next so this is the hoss purchased in a size 24 inch box almost four years ago same time that i purchased the uh, forte and it's it's a hardcore alternate bearer I, i'll get 101 year the next i got three then I got about 150 and then last year I got zero so this year it's looking loaded again um, let me show you what we have grafted here we have a forte grafted onto it and it's pushed see those red leaves there and you see the grafting in a little bit but my favorite graft of all is this Nishikawa. It's flowering. I grafted this almost a year ago. It actually is about exactly a year ago and it's flowering. Let me show you the graft union on this thing. If you can see that there. And it's gone all the way up there. So, so much for apical dominance I guess that's true most of the time but like in this case that Nishikawa here it pushed but it's much smaller and that was grafted the same day so sometimes the tree the grafts just want to take off if you look here I got about a six inch layer of mulch all around it people see the box and someone asked me did I plant the box no it was a 24 inch box and then I built a perimeter that originally was about 
five by five around it and I extended that out to I think it's about six by six or eight by eight I can't remember if you look in close you'll see how I pulled some mulch back so you can see how the roots kind of feed off of the mulch nice white healthy roots so no matter how much mulch you put down the trees are going to kind of feed off of that and the bees are working this tree so this is my nabal which is of course out on the street so just like my large hoss um, haven't had a problem with the neighbors picking the fruit yet in the last what four years that my trees have been producing out here so we'll see how it goes um, set up a camera system to kind of look because I'm overdue for someone to start taking the fruit uh, you'll see the rocks here that's a usually a no-no but what I do is every year I I check under the mulch and I see how far out the roots are going and I just kind of slide the rocks back every year. So that's how I'm handling that. But this is the Nabal. It's flowering. Should get my first fruit this year. And that's been the fastest growing tree that I've had. So it's getting a really sunny and it's almost time to spray it with some surround WP to protect it from the sun. Um, kind of watch it with the passion fruit um, I have to come out and trim that that's a multi variety fig tree that's another video so here's the holiday um, it's been in the ground for about a year and a half I do have to do some trimming on the lower branches this thing weeps a lot so but it's flowering profusely and the new leaves are coming in. Same thing with the rocks. I slide them back so they don't burn the roots. Um, and last but not least, here's the, here's the lamb hoss. And it's flowering profusely as well. This was the original leader and it just wanted to lean over. Oh, there you go, got a little avocado there if you look closely but I got to trim the lower branches on this one I want to keep a skirt but I don't want fruit on the ground so anyway this one is uh, flowering profuse, profusely and this other branch here ended up taking, taking off as the leader so I'm just going to let it go and just keep it staked up so that's about it. I have more seedlings that I won't bore you with. Um, compare these to my last update. I want to say I did it about a year ago. So if you go back, look in the description below and you'll see my updates from last year. And then you can kind of compare the progress and I'll do more videos on how I fertilize and where I get the mulch and things like that. So if you, if you could just like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also be on the lookout for a video about a green gold giveaway that I'm gonna do for my uh, subscribers. So we'll use like a random generator to pick a winner and I'll send the tree to whoever that winner is. Thanks. Bye.